Bootleg Camp Podcast, special guest in here, Flippin' NJ, a.k.a., well, your, your a.k.a. is Flippin' NJ, but yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is Cesar Pena, man. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having me. First of all, congratulations. You and Envy uh, have built, I want to say, like an a, like a empire, man. Yeah. You know, obviously, you've been doing the real estate thing a lot longer, but you guys kind of came together. You have the seminars just yeah. booming. And recent news of you guys starting a, uh, your own TV show, the 50 Cent backed at, yep. at A and E, right? Yep. So congrats, man. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. What is the uh, for what you guys do? Obviously, um, what is the angle of the TV show? Our TV show is going to be different than every other any other real estate show you've seen on TV. Just uh, when you look at most of the shows, the flipping shows, very cookie cutter. They don't really show you like uh, the development side of real estate. They don't show you rental, the rental property side of real estate. They right. don't show you dealing with tenants, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So we're kind of going to focus on everything. We're still going to show flips. Right. We're still going to show, you know, we also mentor a lot of celebrities too mm -hmm. and, uh, and regular people. We're going to show that side of it and, you know, pretty much all around everything in real estate you can imagine that you've never seen before on TV. Yeah, because like that's like kind of the, the part that we don't see is like dealing with a crazy tenant yep. or... Just like some of the, I mean, I've seen some of the properties that you flipped and like, man, I hear that you like, well, you've said this before that you'll just buy properties off of auction.com without yeah. seeing them in person, right? Yeah. So pretty much, man, sometimes to me, it's just numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So the numbers make sense in New Jersey. The numbers make sense in Chicago. It's just numbers. So I buy properties all the time hub, uh, from HubZoo, auction.com. Um, just off the like picks. Right? Just off of picks and just the numbers. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, talk about like, um, one, how did you, for people who don't know, I mean, you've told the story a lot, but just what's like a quick synopsis on how you got, like your past and how you got uh, initially started in um, into the real estate game? So my story is not a traditional real estate story, right? Or right. a real estate investor story. So uh, I barely have a high school diploma, yep. right? Uh, my parents, I don't come from money. Nobody in my family owned any real estate. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated high school, instead of going to college like my friends did, I chose the streets. Right. So everybody told me, if you don't change your life, you're going to end up in prison. I didn't listen. I ended up in prison. So, but at that point, I turned a negative into a positive. So when I was in prison, there was a guy, uh, his name is Renee, which he's, to this day, he's my big brother. Yeah. He was a big real estate developer in Hoboken, New Jersey. Yep. Uh, he was one of the five, first guys that invested in Hoboken when Hoboken was urban. And then, you know, of course, Hoboken is probably one of the most expensive places in New Jersey. Yeah. So he went in. Uh, he had a charge for political corruption. He's never been in prison before. So I taught him how to bid, and he taught me about real estate. Mm. Wait, wait, when you say bid, what, what is a bid? And I told him how, you know, to kind of taught him how everything worked in prison. Right, just kind of the politics. Yeah, how the to... politics, the right thing to do, you know. Don't cut nobody on the phone. Don't cut, don't cut nobody on the, on the child line, right. you know. Uh, don't sit here. Don't sit, you know, stuff like that. Watch TV and this TV. You were like, like his, TV. you were like his big homie in jails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though you know, like, I was for white collar crime, so right. I was in a camp, so it right, wasn't right. that serious. Right, 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 right. But you know, there's still rules. There's still like rules everywhere. everywhere yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's rules like every, like everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. So, um, what was your first like? Do you remember your first property? Was it a, a successful one? So, when I get out of jail, which is crazy, this was the Wild Cowboy days back in 2006, right? So this is right, this is before the crash yeah. happened. So right, at, which is, people always ask me, that I can't believe this. So right out the half, uh, out of prison, I go to the halfway house and I start doing mortgages. Wow. So here I am in the halfway house and I have access to the people's information. I just came out of prison, right? But those were the Wild Cowboy days, yeah. right? Yeah. So I, I come home, I start doing mortgages, you know, it was crazy back then. In that market, I remember my first loan that I did, the lady was 80 years old. She bought a house for 480000 and we got her 100% financing. What the fuck? She was also crazy. Like I said, crazy. Everybody crazy. was getting approved for houses back Bro, then. Back then, if you bought a house, right, I would buy a house because you bought a house to compete with you, and I would get approved like, the next day. There's like, no problem. Yeah. You buy a house today, and it's worth $50,000 more the next day. And you, could, you go and cash out or get a line of credit. That's crazy. It, it, it was crazy back then, right? That's why it, the bubble happened. So I came home, started doing mortgages, was doing great, you know, straight out of prison. I'm making fifteen, twenty thousand a month, right. which is awesome. Then the market collapses. My wife's Cuban, I'm Dominican. So we opened up a Cuban restaurant. Mm -hmm. 
We had no business opening up a restaurant. Right. We don't know nothing about the restaurant business. Tough business. Tough business. My mother-in-law, uh, she's a chef. Mm -hmm. So we opened up the, the restaurant and, you know, we were kind of counting on her, right? Right. So first two months, we're doing great, right? The next thing you know, man, we just, it was, it, we got into the restaurant business. That's when there was like a shortage, right, of everything. I think it was like an for shortage or something like that. So rice went up, flour went up. Everything was Everything going. went up, right? A box, a box of plantains went from like $20 to like $90, right? Jesus. So we're in the restaurant for like a year and a half. We lost everything. We, I came home doing great with mortgages, switched to this. Right. Losing everything again. We had uh, two houses in foreclosure that we owned at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw an opportunity in real estate. I took it. And I made 70000 and we closed the restaurant the next day. What were the details on the, that first 70000 That was a three-family home in Patterson, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, And I, I did that as a flip. So, so you bought it, fixed yep. it up, flipped it. Yep. So I, I actually bought it. Uh, and the market was still at that point not going down all the way. So right. it was still like right there. So I bought it and I sold it to somebody else and made a quick 70000 Wow. Yep. That's crazy. Do you, how did you, did you, what was your financing process for that first house? Well, uh, the person that bought it off of me, they bought it cash. And wow. I, I got it, I got that house, if I remember correctly, uh, I believe it was FHA. Wow. Like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that, that's one thing I think that you explained pretty well is I think a lot of people, they don't understand all of the options that they have to acquire rental properties, to acquire properties to invest in. I think uh, we're in a really weird space right now because the rates went up. Yeah. And I don't feel like the property value has adjusted to the rate hike yet. No. Um, would you suggest people buying right now? Because it feels like it's kind of like at least just i'm not an expert like mm. you but it, it from my from my perspective it feels like it's probably the wrong time to buy so right now the market's a little funny right it is anybody buying a single family home i will kind of hold off on that because right. that's where you're going to see your biggest correction yeah right as far as rental properties multi-families it's on fire like it's not going to stop because rents are up so high right right so you know i'll give you an example like of uh, three family in Patterson, New Jersey. You probably get it right now for 500000 right? Mm -hmm. but just, you know, just simple numbers, right? Let's name and count taxes. Say uh, you get a 7%, right? Or may maybe you buy the rate down and you get a 6%. Let's say it's $3,000. What's the rate right now? As of yesterday, uh, it was like 6.9 for 30 year fix. Uh, for a 15 year, it was like 6.5. Damn, it's crazy how yeah. much it's jumped. And then the adjustable was a little bit lower. Right. Yeah. So let's say right now you go to Patterson and let's say you get lucky, you buy the rate down, you get a property for 500000 You buy that property, uh, let's say your mortgage, just round numbers, right? Not getting to all of it, right? Let's say it's $3,000 a month, right? The rates are lower, right? In that market, right? In your apartment, you could, if it was a three family, you could get about $4,500 a month, right? So. You actually make more money now when the rate is actually higher. When because people don't rents understand are because rents are so high. So now instead of getting fifteen hundred dollars for that apartment, now I'm getting twenty five hundred. Mm. So I'm now making seventy five hundred compared to making the forty five. Right. Yeah, my mortgage is let's say three thousand plus taxes, insurance, whatever that is. Say I'm, I'm at five thousand. Let's say all in, I'm still making twenty five hundred dollars a month. Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah, and like and and you're in a place where you know. You have tenants, so it's like, if it ever corrects, you can refinance, right? Yep. If the rate goes down, yeah. you know. Because, to be honest with you, like, the average rate, right, normal rates have always been between five to six. Right? Yeah, what's, well, what happened recently was kind of like fake because they were trying to save the housing market from yeah. COVID, right? Yeah, so it's like we got kind of spoiled. For right? sure. My first property that I bought, it was with a state loan back in 04, and my interest rate was 8%. Wow. The only difference was that back then, right, compared to now, the uh, the rates were high, but the rents didn't support the mortgage uh, payment. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now, the rents, even if you go on a single family, support whatever the payment is monthly because the rents are so high. Yep. So you can still cash flow in any market on the rental side. 
So let's say somebody has, let's say they've saved up 50 bands, right? Mm -hmm. They got 50K and they want to, they're making decent money. Let's say they're making, I don't know, $150,000 a year. Hundred, yep. Say they're in the six figures, or the low six figures range, and they want to get into getting their first rental property. Um, I know there's like tons of options for people to, um, whether it's a hard money loan, obviously there's a conventional loan. You mentioned the FHA loan yep. earlier. If you're that person, what route are you taking to try to uh, to, to get get that first property right in, in today's climate yeah. right now? If you have no experience, right, I wouldn't do a flip and I wouldn't do a property to rehab. I would definitely get a rental that's cash flowing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that, that That's what I would do, right? And it all depends what program you want to use, right? Right. If you, you could do FHA, right, and put 3.5% uh, down. You could uh, do a conventional product. I think uh, conventional right now on a two-family investment, you get away with putting 10% down. Mm -hmm. uh, you could go stated, right? The stated program that kind of caused, caused the bubble last time is back. What is it, the stated thing? So stated program now, it's called, well, it's, it's really, it's not called stated anymore. It's an asset-based loan, okay. right? So meaning you don't have to show any tax returns. Wow. You put uh, 15 to 20% down the rental income that the property is making. So they're, they'll pretty much, a stated loan is one in which they know that you're renting the property out because yep. they have to be able to see the numbers make sense. Yeah, so the numbers got the numbers have to make sense. All you need is good credit, mm -hmm. right? You need probably at least a 680 credit score. You need uh, to show the the money in the bank. It doesn't have to be seasoned. If somebody wants to borrow the money, you could just transfer it right over. It's not like a, a FHA product. But they're the not going to be like, it'll show us two yeah. years of your bank statements. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like that. Um, you need an appraisal, title, the lease is for the property, mm -hmm. and that's it. You get a loan in 45 to 60 days. Wow. Which that program is very popular right now because a lot of people don't, don't, aren't qualifying for conventional financing. Right. So that, that program, everybody's using it right now. Wow. And then for like a hard money loan or a line of credit situation, would you say that those are more the options you would go to if you need to make a, like a flip on a property? Yeah. Because it's uh, more of a short-term thing, right? Yeah, definitely. You know, as far as flipping properties, hard money is the way to go. Yeah. Right? Uh, hard money right now, with experience, you're looking at 90% uh, 90, 90 loan to value, 100% on the rehab, meaning you only got to put 10% down and they're going to give you all the rehab dollars. For people if, who don't know what, the, what a hard money loan is, just kind of break it down. So a hard money loan is pretty much private financing. Right? Yeah. It's a way of moving quicker because when, when it comes to rehabbing properties, uh, there is not a lot of options. Mm -hmm. It's either a hard money loan or a FHA 203K loan. FHA to free K loan, you have to live in the property. Okay. Hard money is for, is pretty much for investors. Yeah. Right. It goes under an LLC. It doesn't appear on your personal credit report. Right. But you have to. It costs money. Right. Yeah. The so interest rates a lot higher. It's a lot higher. It could be anywhere between an eight to twelve percent. Mm. But you move fast, right? In real estate, when you find a good deal, that's the whole thing. You need speed. You need to have right? that cash ready. That's it. So hard money is considered the same thing as cash. So when you go on the auction site and it tells you cash only. Technically, that means that you can also use hard money. Mm. It means the same thing. Where do you, like, because I know that, like, there's different types of hard money lenders, but, like, for people who have no idea how to find a hard money lender or how to even get involved in that world, like, where did, where is a good place to start with that? Well, when I first started, it was a little bit harder, right? Because I got back in a way when everything crashed. But now there's hard money lenders everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, there's hard money lenders everywhere. You, you know, you, you could type in hard, a hard money lender on uh, just on Google, on Instagram, any, yeah. anywhere, and, and it pops up. And they, those, what they do is essentially they have a like they do they, their insurance is the property, right? Yeah. So pretty much, a hard money lender will not do a deal unless there's meat on the bone. It has to make sense, right? So for example, if you're trying to flip a property, right, yeah. and it needs rehab, and it's worth three hundred thousand dollars, right? and you're paying $300,000, they're not gonna do that deal. Because God forbid, if you don't pay, and they take the property away, there's no meat on the bone, yeah, there's no problem. They're gonna break even, what's the point of them risking yeah. it? Now, if that property if it's worth 300,000. But you got it for 220. And you're all in. Yeah. What rehab, yeah. So pretty much a, a good rule to follow is a 70% rule. Mm -hmm. That kind of gives you an idea if a lender will do that deal. 30% money yeah. to make for, for him. If Hard money lender is this that game, right? Where at the end of the day, 
they don't want you to pay because they want your deal, right? So yeah, you, you, you pay a higher interest rate or whatever, but at the end of the day, it, it's, it's all about risk. So they want to make sure the deal is worth it and got to do pay, they can make money on the deal. Yo, there is like a art, I got a homie, uh, DJ Christian in the Tampa area who, uh, he's been flipping houses for 10 years now and he always would tell me there's like little things when you flip a house, like you could go, go down to the color of the door. Like what are some of the like random little like things that people don't think about? Let's say if they're rehabbing a house to flip or if they're just rehabbing a house to add some value to their own property. Like, what are some of those, like, hacks that, that you always make sure your houses have? Well, when it comes to different properties, right, and rental properties, yeah, I only go into the properties when I do my walkthrough to make sure, the, uh, you know, it, it's worth it before my contractors go in there right. and kind of tell them. But we already have a system in place where I don't have to be there or even talk to my guys anymore. They pretty much know everything that you, that you have to do because the problem is with these properties right at the end of the day you want to make money yeah my first property that i purchased to flip this was a flip property i went in there i wanted everything designer the paint this i went crazy with it i want to do this i want to do that the nicest thing everything nice yeah it was a three it was a three family that i was flipping at the time and two of the units i had tenants in them mm -hmm. so me and my wife arguing about fixtures right this, that right Nightmare. And then I go back to the property. I, I ended up having to evict somebody, mm -hmm. right, in, in that unit. And in six months, they destroyed the whole thing, right? And I'm like, yo, all this headache, picking all these nice and things. And they fucked it up. Yeah. Now, with me, it's just a system, right? I buy everything in bulk. All my apartments, all my bills, the same colors, the same floors, everything. Mm. And then it's just automatic. I don't even have to think about it. My guys don't got to think about it. It's hey, what up, y'all? Bootleg Kev. Got to stop the interview to tell you about our newest sponsor, man. Shout out to the homies at Hardeen Las Vegas. That's right. The number one dispensary in the whole state of Nevada, let alone in the whole fucking country. So many choices of premium cannabis, ladies and gentlemen. It is like, how can I put this? You walk into it. You go to Hardeen in Las Vegas. When you're on vacation, when you're out there tricking off, whatever you're doing, stop off at Hardeen, tell them I sent you, be like, yo, bootleg Kev sent me. They're going to take care of you at Hardeen. When I say selection, I mean selection of the best premium cannabis in the world, the best dispensary. There's a reason why Hardeen is world famous. Follow them right now, Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Go to their website, HardeenLasVegas.com. That's J A R. D-I-N underscore Las Vegas. When you're in Vegas, you have to pull up to Hardeen. Tell them I sent you and get high off your fucking face. I don't even know what that means. How do you get high off of your face? Eh, whatever. Melt your fucking face off with some of that good Hardeen, y'all. Go follow them one more time. That's Hardeen underscore Las Vegas. Let's get back to the interview. So once you identify that system, mm -hmm. it makes everything so much easier. Yep. Because it's like you're scaling just, yo, we know what our... Yeah. our yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, because I mean, right now there's obviously a shortage on a lot of supplies and stuff. Has, yeah. has that made things like a little more difficult for you, or is it just you just got to pay more? Yeah. You just got to pay more. Yeah. You know, for me, on the rental side of the business, it doesn't affect me, right? Because, yeah, I'm paying more for material, but I'm making more on, on the rent. On the rent, side, yeah. Right? And before, even, you know, wood, all the other stuff, you know, uh, wire, whatever it was, it didn't really matter because the values went up so high after COVID, right? So you mm -hmm. were still making that money up anyway. Right, 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 right. Now it's a little different, but again, the market right now, the values have not got down yet, right? It's probably not going to happen for another, you, you're probably looking at another about like, a year. Yeah, about another year right. we, before you really see a big change, right? Especially in the tri-state area where we are, like values are insane. Yeah. Like we're still getting five, ten offers on a property. Crazy. Yeah, so it, it hasn't changed yet. Maybe eventually it will. But again, you, you don't know what could happen a year from now. I was going to say, would you, if somebody was watching this who is a first time investor or they not, not trying to purchase a, a, a property for themselves to live in, but let's say they want to do a flip. You said, first of all, you said you advise people not to do a flip off the back, right? Yeah. But would you advise people to wait for the adjustment to happen? Or since rental prices are so high, it's okay to take the risk on the, uh, full price of the home possibly dipping in a year year and a half but the rent's so high that it doesn't matter yeah i would definitely start with a rental property right 
when the market changes, right, if it changes a year from now, where you're really going to get hurt or see a difference is, let's say you're a first-time flipper. You come into the market. You buy this property now, right? And uh, eight months from now, the value drops. Yeah. And then it took you so long to get that property on the market. You can get hurt. Yeah, because you're new to flipping a house. Exactly. Things don't happen as quick as if you were to flip a house because yep. people don't have their system in place. They don't have five, six months by then. Yeah. I mean, imagine if you bought a house in February and yeah. it, by June your, your house was over. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's changed. The yeah. demand's changed for buying a single family home, you know. Because yeah. you got to understand right there, right now, right, we're in October, right? Yep. So any sale that closes right now, any high sale, you could use that comp for a whole year, mm -hmm. right? When it comes to uh, anything from a, from a condo all the way to a four family, right? right? So that comp is good for the, for the next year. So a comp from now that's sold for five fifty is still good next year, right? For twelve months, most appraisers though they'll come out they like maybe they like, they rather use six months, but that comp is good. Yeah. So now when you don't have comps anymore, right? That's when the market changes because now you don't have high comps anymore. Now you got to go on the new value. So if, if you're a newbie flipper or anybody getting into the flipping game that you can't get the property done within the next six months, you could get hurt. Right. So if somebody, let's say they have a couple of rental properties and they want to do a flip, they found a good deal, right? Yep. What are some of those things that you, you have your system in place? What are the things that you can save money on, whether it's fixtures, whether it's lighting, whether it's tile? And what are the things that you're like, don't cut corners on these things. This is important. These things you can find deals on. Like, You know, at the end of the day, right, it's not really... It's all numbers, right? And you have to learn your numbers mm -hmm. because that's how you get ripped off, especially by contractors, right? Right. The name says it all, contractors, right? So I always buy my own material because when you deal with a contractor, they usually uh, Puts up more time. raise the price, you know, between 10 to 20%, right? Um, you never want to give a contractor too much money, right? That's a big mistake that I learned at the beginning. You always want to break down that payment at least anywhere between four to six, right, mm -hmm. payments. Because when you give a contractor too much money, at, at a certain point, he gets lazy. Yeah. Because he already has most of your money. Now he has most of your money. Now he moves on to the next job. Another guy is going to give him more money than yep. what, you get, what, what you owe him. Right? That happens all the time. Yeah, so you got you know, you to watch things like that. Yeah. Have buy you... in bulk. Whenever I see a good sale, I buy in bulk. Just you know, anything. Yeah, anything. Yeah. What is, it, what is something that you've noticed has gone up the most right now? Like, just is it, obviously, woods. I mean, we always hear about wood. Is it? Well, wood, wood actually went down, so wood's not bad. Steel is up Steel. like crazy. Yeah, so uh, besides the flips, right, the regular rentals, we also develop properties from scratch. So right now I'm putting up a 50-unit building in Patterson, New Jersey, an 80-unit and a 100-unit, right? Jesus. I just finished my foundation, and uh, I just got a quote for steel, and it's almost up 50 cents more. Then when I, I got a quote for it about six months ago. Wow. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty big. So as of today, man, because you, uh, would, okay, so that first house you flipped and made 70K on, what year was that? That was back in uh, 2008, 2007, around there. So fast forward to now, how many doors do you have currently? As far as doors and doors that we also have under construction, nationwide, we're probably at about 2,800. Wow. 2800 and I probably have right now about 800 other units under contract. Wow. Um, you know, most of my portfolio is in New Jersey, about 70%, but I also have been expanding to the Midwest. Yeah, you were telling me. Yeah, yeah so uh, I've been buying a lot in Chicago. Chicago is a great market to invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of see what I did in Patterson in Chicago, right? At the end of the day, it's old numbers. When I first started in Patterson, New Jersey, our average rent was $900, Right. Rent now is twenty five hundred to three thousand. Wow! In Chicago, the average rent when I first got there about a year and a half ago was about a thousand to eleven hundred. They're already up to fourteen hundred. Right, it's just so going up. When I look at units, right, especially on the commercial side, I look the, at the price per unit what I could buy it for. Mm -hmm. When I started in Patterson, I was buying per unit twenty thousand dollars a unit, right? So, ten uh, ten unit twenty thousand a unit two hundred thousand, right? So now. I'm in the Midwest, and I'm paying, well, well, to backtrack a little bit. So now those units that I bought in New Jersey, now I'm selling them for 150000 to 200000 per unit. Wow. In a matter of five to ten years. 
In Chicago, I'm paying uh, ten thousand to thirty thousand a unit. In less than two years, is already up to seventy to eighty thousand a unit. Wow! So I kind of see what I did here. I'm doing over there. It's like like kind of getting up to that level. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you this, man, because obviously you talked earlier about dealing with like crazy tenants. Uh, that seems to be the biggest headache perceptually when we think of like um, being a, a landlord, right? Um, obviously, especially during COVID, there was a lot of uh, like rules that protected tenants to not pay rent. And I know a lot of people took advantage of that. Oh, yeah. Um, talk about that side of it, man, because it's obviously the side that's not as glamorous and that seems to be uh, one of the sides of this thing that can can be the most stressful. I mean, you know what it is? When it comes to dealing with tenants, most people don't know this part that you can get a property manager, right? You can pay a property manager five to 10%. You don't deal with them on the headaches. They handle everything. They handle everything. Yeah. Nobody's going to call you. They don't have no heat. They're not going to call you that their toilet is running. You just hire a property management company that you trust. That's it. Yeah. They, they kind of. Yeah. And they could be anywhere between five to 10% that they charge, right? Yeah. But it's uh, worth it. Yeah, so think about it, right? Like, let's say you got a unit that you're getting $1,000 a month. and hundred bucks. Five, ten percent, fifty two hundred dollars Yeah. You don't deal with, it, with any headache. You don't deal with the headache, yeah. yeah. The one thing, though, when it comes to rental properties, right, when you want to be a landlord, you have to be in tenant and landlord-friendly states, right? You don't want to be in a tenant-friendly state. So New Jersey is landlord-friendly, right? Atlanta, Florida, Chicago, they're all landlord-friendly states, meaning... In Florida, you can evict somebody in about two to three weeks. The sheriff goes in the house and throws all your stuff out. Like, it's crazy over there, right? Atlanta's pretty quickly. Uh, Chicago, New York is anywhere between. I mean, Chicago and New Jersey, I'm, I'm sorry. It's very, it's 30 to 45 days. It's still lagging. It's getting back to normal now. So it's probably about 60 to 70 days. Right. Uh, you, California. Could, <laughs> you're fucked in California. Yeah. <laughs> Just like uh, New York. Yeah. Uh, New York right now, people are probably going to wait. COVID and everything else, before COVID, it, it took you about a year to evict somebody in New York. Wow. Now it's probably up to like two years. What? So people could just sit on it and you got to eat that sit, mortgage. Bro, and, and they take advantage. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, and, and that, 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 that's just one of the, the things. You got to be careful what state when it comes to uh, that you want to be a landlord. Because of stuff like that, will you like not get into certain markets? Oh, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's wild, man. Have you... Uh, Look, when you have 2,800 doors and you have so much stuff happening, um, how, I mean, how do you keep up with the financials? Like, how do you keep up with everything? Do you have an accountant? Does your wife help? Like, what is the... Oh, yeah, my, my wife is, you know, my right hand. I was going to say, because, like, one of the biggest things is, like, I feel like when you start making that much money, um, people make mistakes, man. Things fall through the crack. They don't dot their I's. They don't cross their T's. So what are the things that, like, you would just suggest people make sure they have in line if you once you've kind of start getting that many streams of income coming in you definitely want to have a good real estate accountant right mm -hmm. when i first started i was using uh this accountant right she was local i used her for a couple years and one day she tells me caesar i'm learning with you and i'm like what do you mean you're learning with me as you're doing real estate i'm learning with you so but i'm like you're the professional you're yeah, supposed yeah. to be teaching me the what? tricks of the yeah. trade so at that point, I knew I had to change accountants, right? And now I have a, a, a new accountant, uh, you know, that I save a lot of money with, right? Because real estate is one of those uh, financial vehicles where you don't pay a lot when it comes to taxes, mm -hmm. right? There's so many loopholes in the tax code, right, that are actually legal, right? Uh, so you definitely need a good real estate accountant. To take advantage of those yep. loopholes. You got to put a good team together when it comes to property managers, right, and contractors. Uh, contractor part. Whenever I find a contractor that's really good, I just keep them year-round. Like, I just hire him and keep him in-house. You'll be like, yo, you're, you work for me. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And then, of course, you need uh, good property management software. Like, we use AppFolio. Mm -hmm. AppFolio is really good. Um, talk about uh, just the process of finding homes for people who don't know. Like, um, I know you've always talked about auction.com. Yeah. Um, but what, what, would, what would you, uh, like I said, somebody's just... New, they got some money in the bank, they got decent credit, they want to get this thing popping, where would they go first? Well, right now, it's, it's just building relationships, right? Because the auction sites, ever since COVID hit, they haven't had a lot of inventory. Right. But now it's getting flooded again. Little by little, more properties are coming to the market, so people are going to have more opportunity. Uh, I, I do the auction sites, 
uh, the county the county sheriff sales, mm-hmm. right? Or state sheriff sales. It, it all depends, right? I, I go to those. And you pick, pick up deals there. Uh, another good relationship is to have a, a, a good relationship, a build a good relationship with an estate attorney. Mm. A lot of times when people pass away, uh, the heirs usually don't want to deal with, with the, the properties, house. with the buildings or whatever it is. I've picked up a lot of deals like that. I picked up a lot of buildings in Patterson. Uh, people that passed away that the, the kids and the grandkids didn't want to deal with it anymore. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the uh, tax things that you've learned, man? Because I think some people don't understand, like, because if, if you sell a house, like, let's say you buy and you sell a flip, right? Yep. Um, wouldn't it be in your best interest to take all that money and put it into another property as soon as possible? Or what, like, kind of give me some of those tax loopholes that are legal, that are legit, that, you know. Well, you know, everything, when it comes to flip properties, everything is a write-off, right? From the interest that you paid, you know, the, your hard money lender, the points, everything's a write-off. And everything that you buy, your, you know, uh, the taxes you paid on the property, the insurance, everything is yeah. a write-off, right? So you don't really pay that much taxes when it comes to real estate because you have so many write-offs and so many expenses that they, you could take off the... You have to pay life. capital gains taxes on the profit? Yeah. Okay. If you hold it for more than a year, right, uh, you pay less, right? Uh, but yeah, you have to pay capital gains. But again, it's all numbers, you know. It's what part cost of doing business? Yeah, it's the cost of doing business. But there's so many expenses, right, that you can write off that, uh, you know, you, you could always win. You could right? always win. Rental properties. That's really where you want to be, because with rental properties, you have depreciation, right? Mm. A rental property, for some reason, right, is considered a depreciating asset. So every year you get to write off a certain number, right? So let's say, for example, right, let's use big numbers. Um, I made $3 million in rental income last year, right? But I have $2 million in depreciation, right? So I could depreciate the asset for 25 years, right? So $3 million I made, but I have depreciation of $2 million, right? So now I only pay taxes on $1 million. Mm. But I made $3 million. But, but it's in the code because of depreciation that I could write off $2 million. So now I made three million. But I you're only paying taxes million. on a million. Yep, I party with the with, with the with three million. million. You do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but now I only pay taxes on the million. Yeah, that's wild that they consider a rental pro- property a depreciating asset. Yep. I mean, it's great for for you, yeah. right? Yeah. Hey guys, we got to stop the interview to tell you about our good folks over at BlueChew.com. That's right. Listen, you got to go to BlueChew right now. Sign up for uh, BlueChew with the promo code Bootleg. You're gonna get your first month. For free, Blue Chew, the same active ingredient as Viagra and as Cialis, but in a chewable form. That's right. You pop the Blue Chew, chew that thing, wash it down with your beverage of choice, and then get to work with that hard fucking cock of yours. Your dick is going to be harder than trigonometry was in high school, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be fucking raw. Like, you know... uh. Ryu and Street Fighter, he'd be like, are you kidding? And he does the motherfucking, this is going to be your dick. It's going to be like Ryu's fucking uppercut. You know what I'm saying? God bless whoever's on the receiving end of that. Consensually, of course. Uh, they're going to thank you for taking the Blue Chew. So go to BlueChew.com. Use the promo code BOOTLEG. All right? I'm talking free month. Right to your doorstep. Indiscreet packaging. No awkward doctor's visits. All right? It's all online. You don't have to worry about going and sitting in a waiting room and be like, hey, doc, I have my dick. I could use a little a pep in my step, and then it's awkward. You got to look at this old fuck talking about your dick. He might ask you to pull it out. Who fucking knows what's going on? At Blue Chew, none of that's happening. BlueChew.com. And they also got the new, brand new, uh, mint-flavored chewable, which has Vardenafil in it, which is the same active ingredient as Levitra and Staxin, which is a little more potent. A little more potent if you need the extra on top of the extra. You know what I mean? Get the mint chewable. Yeah. Your wife will thank you. Your girlfriend will thank you. Your boyfriend will thank you. Whatever the fuck you're fucking will thank you. As long as it's legal. All right? Let's get back to the interview. Go to BlueChew.com. Promo code bootleg. That's it. Is is that just because it's something that you're not personally living in and people like live in, yeah, yeah, in it they wear and tear yeah, and yeah, wear tear and stuff like that wow yeah so so you know that's one of like the best loopholes there are when you're a landlord right yeah uh and the cool thing is about it that even when you write off right that two million right as a loss when you go to the bank to apply for a new loan since they already know what it is 
they actually add back that two million, so you still qualify for more. So, ah, so the uh, bank knows what's up. You still make three. The bank knows yeah. what's up. Yep. Wow, that is wild, man. Um, talk about you and Envy's relationship. Obviously, man, you guys have, uh, like I said earlier, you guys have built up something really incredible. Um, how did you guys initially link up and? Was it like, I mean, he's always been an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Like, um, he's always been on top of his shit. But, like, um, your guys' relationship, how did that start? What was it? So, I met MB, right? I've been in real estate. Before I met him, I, I've been in real estate, give or take, back then, about 12 years, right? Yeah. Um, and I met him through my, one of my good friends, which is Nick the Grit mm -hmm. and uh, Danny Zoo. Nick the Grit and Danny Zhu, uh, they own the label where uh, Feli Wap was signed to. Okay, yeah, 1738? Yeah, 1738. So that, that's That makes sense, Patterson. <laughs> yeah, and you know, we're all from Patterson, yeah. right? And I helped them with a lot of their investments too early on. And that's how uh, Nate introduced me to, to, to DM me. Yeah. Yeah. And then since then, <clears throat> he told me, yo, you got a pretty dope story. It was never in my cards to be a public speaker, right? right. I was never thinking about that. Uh, we announced on Instagram. Right, no marketing, nothing, just videos with iPhone. We're having a real estate seminar. Mm -hmm. Five hundred people showed up. He threw me in, f in front of this. Uh, no, you know it's funny that Envy didn't give me no pointers, didn't tell me anything, just gave me the mic and told me go ahead, talk. figure it out, figure it out. <laughs> Bro, I went out there, man. My throat got dry. I, I couldn't talk for like the first two minutes. I was looking at my wife. I was like, I hope she brings me some water. Yeah, <laughs> right. And um, since then, man, we had a hundred eighty thousand people come to our real estate seminars. Wow. Uh, about two hundred million dollars worth of wealth was built in our communities wow. for people that invested in real estate in our sem through the seminars. Wow! So, like, for people who, because you know, I think that some of these, sometimes when you think of like seminars in general, right, there is some stigma that comes with those because there's people who do like seminars, but it 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 feels like an extremely, um, I wouldn't say a scam, right? But like, there's there's like a lot of these self-help guys yeah. who will have a seminar and like, I'm not sure what you're taking from it except for coming out of it like super inspired. Yeah. When you guys do a seminar, you guys are literally teaching yep. black and white, yeah. very applicable things. Yeah, so we break everything down, right? We start with credit, right? Because credit is very important. Yeah. Right, especially, you know, we teach you about your personal credit, we teach you about business credit, we start with that. <clears throat> from there, uh, we have a, uh, a mortgage person, right? They tell you how, how to qualify, what do you need. Then we'll have a real estate attorney. We'll have a real estate broker in that area, right? Mm -hmm. That knows that market. We'll have our friends from auction.com. They're yeah. talking about their inventory. We'll have a hard money lender and explain to people how that process is. Wow. We'll have a contractor there. And then at the end, we tell our stories. At our seminars, there is no upsell. So you pay anywhere between 100 to three hundred dollars a ticket, and that's it. That's it. There's no right? like, hey, yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you a course. Right. I'm not telling you, hey, if you really wanted me flipping in Jay and DJ Envy, they're in the next seminar, right? They're in the next seminar. You yeah, yeah. Pay you want to have dinner dollars. with us tonight? You know. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, that's the thing too, man. I've been to a couple of seminars where you go, and they announce these people they're going to be there, and they're not there. Listen, I have a friend of mine who is absolutely obsessed with Grant Cordon, mm -hmm. and he has spent ridiculous amounts of money to hang out with him at these. Like, I'm talking about like. Stupid money. Right. Like to just hang out with Grant Cardone. And I'm like, wait. He's like, you know, taking selfies with him. They're yeah. eating dinner. And I'm like, bro, how much did that cost? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's wild. When I see shit like that, I'm just like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, when you think about it, man, right now, you know, to be honest with you, Grant Cardone is kind of like what Trump was, right? At one point, Trump was kind of like the face of real estate in the U.S., right? Right, yeah. Grant's definitely that face. Yeah, he's definitely that face right now. Yeah. Like, he, he got it. And he's running, I mean, he's running it up. God yeah, bless yeah, him, man. Yeah. But yeah, I think like, uh, you know, it, it, I just think that's dope, man. For, for you, like uh, the seminar thing, obviously, when did you guys feel like you kind of mastered the, that? Because like you said, it didn't start off, like you started off with 500 people. Yeah. Like when did you guys realize like, oh. Probably like the first year in, right? And then we were even going to go harder the next year, but then COVID hit. Yeah. So we started doing webinars and stuff like that. But now it's a little weird, right? Uh, we're not doing as many seminars as, as we used to because it's oversaturated. Everybody now, right, in the age of social media is like, let's say they sell one house, they're an expert. They do one stock trade, they're an expert. Right. They have one truck, they're an expert. Everybody wants to sell a course. 
everybody wants to do a seminar. So people have to be very careful because mm -hmm. a lot a lot of times you go to these events and to these uh, places and they don't really know what they're talking about. Mm. So it's cool, right, that me and MB made it cool where people that look like us mm -hmm. could do, you know, seminars could be involved in that kind of the business, you know, could promote things like that, which is awesome. But then we also made it too easy, right? Mm. Where now anybody thinks they could do it. Right. And even though they're not really doing it, it looks like, they, you know, because the age of social media, you don't know who's doing what. Yeah. Right? Um, for people who, let's talk about credit. Obviously, personal credit is important. Business credit's a whole other thing. Uh, what would you say is somebody's easiest course to correct their credit score? Let's say that they're hanging around like a 600, a 580, and they're trying to get in that... 700 range mm -hmm. what are some of the tips that you could give somebody like that the, the easiest thing right let's say uh your wife has a credit card right let's say your wife for example right we both um if she had that credit card for at least two years mm -hmm. right make you an authorized user when she makes you an authorized user you get her good credit history for the last two years wow so and she doesn't have to give you the card so it could be a friend it could be a, a family member. It could be anybody. They, they add you as you. an authorized yeah. user. But you want to make sure that as a person doesn't even really use that credit card. Right. Right. And now by doing that, you could go from a 600 credit score all the way to a uh, 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 700. Wow. 720 within 30 days. Wow. Once it's reported. So that's like one of the easiest tricks that you could do to build your credit score. So if you, for, if you know somebody, you tr it's almost worth you paying them to become an authorized user. <laughs> if you got Well, that's the issue. A lot of people do charge for that, for trade lines, and that's illegal. And that you got to be careful because I've known I've no people in the past that actually paid people. And then next thing you know, they don't pay the balance on the credit card. And now you get late on your credit your... And now your credit's fucked. Yeah. So you really want to go to like a personal friend, you family, know, family member yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to help you with Some, something like Someone that. you trust. Yeah, yeah. Like I got one credit card. I got like 20 people on it. <laughs> I don't even use it. I just help out, you know, my friends that got low credit scores. Yeah, I was say someone was saying that, because um, my son's 17, someone was saying I could put him on a credit card, but I, th I don't know if he has to be 18 or not. No, so my daughter's been on my credit card now since she was like 14, 15. And so when she turned, how old is your daughter? Uh, she's about, uh, she's 17, she's going to be 18. So when she turns 18, will her credit score already just be in yeah, a good place? Yeah, she'll have good credit. Wow. Yeah, she has good credit now. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got I to gotta figure but, that out. The only thing is, it's certain credit card companies, like, I did it with a Visa and a MasterCard. I tried to put her on my Amex, and they said no. Right. Yeah, they actually, she wasn't 18. Yeah, they, they looked at the actual date. They were like, no, no. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, what about business credit? Because I'm like, uh, right now, I have a few LLCs, and um, my friend just connected me with a accountant to try to kind of turn one of my LLCs into an S-Corp. Okay. Um, when it comes to business credit... Business credit is one of those things that a lot of people don't talk about, right? And it's very important, and it's, a, it's something that you can leverage extremely uh, high if you know what you're doing, Yeah. right? So let's say you have a 720 credit score. I got a 720 credit score. Um, I get my tax ID, right? I go on the IRS website. I get a tax ID. I create my LLC, right? Separate entity from myself. I go open up a bank account, um, you know, whatever it is, radio investments, right? Right. Boom. All right. That's separate from me. Now, I go to Chase Inc., I go to MasterCard, I go to... American Express, whoever. American Express, right? And now I apply with my new uh, entity for uh, business for credit, credit cards, card, right? Yeah. So, they'll do a soft inquiry on my personal, right? If because I you're behind the LLC. Yeah, as long as I have a 720 credit score. And they'll approve me, right? But it will never show on my personal credit. So now it doesn't affect my debt to income ratio. So mm. now on this side, I might have a couple hundred thousand dollars in, 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 in credit, credit card cards, debt, yeah. but it doesn't show here. Right. So it keeps it separate from my personal name. But now, by me doing this with some credit cards, I could take the money, cash it out, and invest in real estate or a, a, a new business mm. by leveraging my credit. Wow. So if you have a 720 personal credit score, you At start, least, yeah. Yeah, you got to have that. You ha you start an LLC, you start an S corp, you'll be able to get qualified for credit cards through your business that don't yep. necessarily touch your personal credit. Nope. Yep, it's always separate. Even cars, you 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 could buy cars under your business name. Right, and like that's the a, another thing. And it's like, a write off. Like there's certain types of cars that you can like yep. if it's a, a certain weight of a car. I think if it's like 
I forget what the what the well, weight is. Well, pretty much any car, you know, like all, like all, you know, even our cars, our expensive cars, like we have it under the LLC and we write them all off. Because technically, we drive around in the. So how do you do that? Properties, give, give me you know, that. Give yeah. me that game, man. Because that's something that like. I was, I was talking to, because uh, like last year, dude, I fucking wrote a fat check to the IRS. And this was, I didn't have an accountant. I wasn't really like, this year I'm going to have an accountant. Like I said, where I'm trying to move so much stuff that's happening in my personal accounts over to my business accounts. And the lady I'm talking to is like, yo, if you have, if it looks like you're going to have to like write a sixty or $70,000 check this year, like you could just go buy a car yeah. with so, that instead of giving it to the IRS. So let's say, for example, right, I have... I go out there and I buy a Bentley, right? I'm paying two thousand dollars a month. It's on my personal name, right? Mm -hmm. I can't write that off, right? It's in your personal name. It's you can't write that name, off, right? Now, let's say I, same scenario, but I put it under the business, mm -hmm. right? So now, let's say I'm paying two thousand dollars a month. Uh, you know, twenty four thousand dollars a year, right? Give or take. I'm a realtor. When I go show properties to people, I, I drive my Bentley. Mm. So now my insurance, my payment my uh, whatever I spend on gas is all a write-off. Right? All of it. Well, it's all a write-off. So think about it this way, right? Uh, it's, it's a percentage, but... I was going to say, because I heard, I heard like certain cards you can only write off a percentage, yeah. right? But... Uh, but you could... All, but can't yeah. you write off the depreciation all up front? Yeah, you, you could do... Uh, there's a whole bunch of things once it's in, the, in your business name, right, that you could do. But, but sim, sim, very simple, right? $100,000... I made $100,000 a year, Right? I got to pay, let's say, $30,000 back to the, to, to the IRS. In taxes. Right, in taxes, right? $30,000. I have a Bentley that I use for my business, right? I pay $24,000. So A year. Let's say I could write off $20,000. $20,000 is a write-off. So I'm driving my 20 dream out car. of the 24. Yeah. So I'm driving my dream car, right? And now I'm saving money on my taxes. Because instead of paying thirty, you got to pay ten. Yep. And is it my... As, as long as it's under my company. What up, y'all? We got to stop the interview real quick, tell you about our good friends at MyBookie. That's right, man. MyBookie is where you want to get this money and uh, enjoy uh, being a degenerate like myself. And it's the best time of the year to be a degenerate because NFL season is, uh, obviously, we are in the midst of a crazy NFL season. NBA season just started. World Series is going down. And you can get your bets in right now. Go to MyBookie and sign up for a new account using the promo code bootleg that's b-o-o-t-l-e-g you sign up right now they will match your first deposit that's right put in a thousand oh they'll give you another thousand to gamble with that's free money free money to gamble with let's get in on this action man nfl season i'm loving this part of the year so much good just everything to bet on football basketball fucking ufc uh, NFL, baseball, whatever. Now is the best time to get your gamble on. So go sign up for a new account at MyBookie. Use that promo code BOOTLEG and double your deposit. Let's get back to the interview. See, to me, this is the shit that people like. These people are, don't these know are the, like the life hacks. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. like you said, like, like uh, that's 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 what I'm trying to figure out, man. Like I feel like the last few years I've made so much money. I've made the most money I've ever made in my life, and I'm like trying to kind of figure out like the rich guy shit yeah. well, <laughs> you know so many things, right? the tax game all yeah. that shit man there's so many loopholes yeah. there's so many things that yeah, like you have to because the more you make the more they want and then because you'd rather drive your dream car yeah. than write give that money yeah, to uncle give sam it to them. yeah because fuck them yeah you know like you're throwing money away mm. it makes no sense right and then eventually the worst part is as you get older then you got to do estate planning because when you die even though you pay taxes on the money that you already made while you were alive, you got to pay your your family has. They're to gonna pay. have to pay taxes on yeah, your money on your estate too. Yeah, yeah, and it could and it, it could be a crazy sum depending on the state. Is that a national thing or does it depend on the state the, where every you state are? Is different, right? Yeah, because more of the conservative different. states are like a little more yep chill on the state tax shit, yeah, right? Yeah, but you but you know, it was like who was it? Uh, this guy didn't think he was gonna die, right? Which nobody thought. Um, Tony Soprano, right? Mm -hmm. From the, uh, James, G James, James Gandolfini. Yeah, he did. He didn't plan. Um, he kind of died unexpectedly. For yeah, sure. he died unexpectedly, and he didn't plan for that. And his wealth, uh, I was reading that the family lost a lot of it because it wasn't planned. Because it went to taxes. Yeah. By the way, kind of a Jersey legend. I'm not sure if he's from Jersey, yeah. but Tony Soprano was from Jersey. Bro, that's like one of the best TV <laughs> shows ever. Of, of, of yeah, all like, time. Like all time. Like, of know. all time. Yeah, yeah. Are you guys going to have any celebrity guests on your show? 
Oh, the, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I've worked with a lot of people. You know, I, I've worked with, with uh, uh, Don Omar. Shout out to Don Omar. I just saw Don Omar's dropping a Daddy Yankee diss. I don't yeah. even know if, if I want to uh, exist in a world in which they're beefing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don Omar, Nicky Jam, uh, Snoop. Uh, I saw you with Snoop. Yeah, he, he's the best. So, so, so those are just some of the guys you've just kind of like yeah. give some mentorship to. Yeah. Nicky Jam's from Boston, right? Yeah, he's originally yeah. from Boston. Yeah. Yeah, now, you know, he's the king of Miami. Shout out, that's a good place to be a king of. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it, it's like he, he's one of the first people that, uh, we, we live there temporary, so we go back and forth. And like what, what he told me makes perfect sense. It's like vacation weather year round. Like okay. you're on vacation the whole year. Yeah. Let me ask you this, man, because like uh, market wise, right? Like most people want to buy their flips, their real estate investments in the sexy markets. Yes. Obviously, it's about the numbers, right? Yeah. So, like, um, I always hear Angela Yee is like heavily invested in Detroit. Uh, you were talking about Chicago, obviously Patterson, New Jersey. Yeah. Um, for you, like, it doesn't matter where, because because I don't hear you saying you're, you're in Miami or you're in uh, LA so, or. Yeah. So, so when it comes to that, right, the biggest bank for your buck in real estate is going to be in up and coming areas, right? Um, I've been a master at investing in urban areas that eventually change over time. So usually any area that's close to a major city is not going to be urban forever. Right. right. You know, the hood doesn't stay the hood forever, right? If you want to use the, 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 say it that way. And the problem is that most of the people that grow up in these areas, instead of coming back investing when they're successful, they leave them, right? And then eventually somebody else comes in and they make all the money. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like the premise for me in MV Seminar, you know? Um, the cool thing about our seminar is that when we started talking about Patterson, New Jersey, right, uh, the values went up. A good deal when I first started talking about Patterson was probably 150. Then it went where a good deal was 300, and now the average sale price is 550 to 600 thousand. But it didn't become gentrified. Most of the people that started investing look like us. Right, because you guys are giving that yeah. game, man. So that you know that, that that was one of the great things that happened for the seminar, but. Definitely, man, across the country, urban areas is where you get the biggest bang for your buck. Don't get me wrong. I do a lot of flips in Miami. Again, Miami's sexy. I like being down there. I get the biggest bang for my buck in Miami, but it's hard to get deals down there, mm. right? So you, you have to do a little bit of both. But when it comes to rental properties, definitely urban areas is where it's at. How many cities do you, like, if you were to just look at your portfolio, you talked about Chicago, Ohio, Jersey. How many different markets are you in right now? Right now, we're in six different states. Wow. Yeah. Okay. All and landlord friendly spots. All landlord friendly. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, like Miami, I don't ha uh, I'm not a landlord. I just do flips there. Wow. So, so in Florida, it's mostly flips. Uh, Atlanta, a mixture of flips and rentals. Uh, New Jersey, I flip. And of course, I'm the king of rentals over here. Yeah. And uh, Midwest is all rentals. What about some markets that you're just. Uh you have your eye on? Texas. Mm. Houston is a great market. Houston's great. Yeah, man. shout out to 5050. He's doing a lot of stuff down there. Oh, yeah, I think he's living there yeah, now, yeah, right? he's living there now. Uh, that's one of the spots that he's at. Believe it or not, Houston is ha, has something that's pretty cool, right, that the rest of the country doesn't have, right? So in Houston, right, let's say you buy a single-family home next, right? You buy this one family. Mm -hmm. I buy the one next to you. I could knock down my house and put up a... 10 unit project or let's say townhouses and there's nothing that you can do there's no zoning so there's oh. no zoning law over there and houston is the only place in the country that i found so far that you could do that wow yeah. i didn't know that yeah because yeah, i live in cali and you have to get zoned to do to build a fucking a, a, a barbecue grill outside <laughs> yeah so, and you know, so it's like over areas. it's like you know it's crazy because it's like california like i'm like obviously socially a pretty like liberal dude but mm -hmm. Living in California, man, it's just so overly, everything's just bureaucracy, red yeah. tape. Yeah. It's just so, they make it so hard for you to do anything, man. Like, it's a lot. So, I mean, it makes sense. Shout out to Houston. Yeah, yeah. That's dope, man. Yeah. Uh, when is, do, do we, first of all, have you guys shot any episodes yet? Uh, no, so far we did a pilot. Uh, we're starting to shoot something next month in November. Okay. So, I think, you know, best case scenario, again, you know, TV takes a long time, like, just to get our deal. There was a bidding war, right, uh, for almost six months. A uh, bunch of networks coming at you. Yeah, a bunch of networks wanted the show. 
And this yeah. was uh, something that you guys had collaborated with 50 with originally, and then... Yeah, it was always with 50. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's who you want to be with, man. And all that stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, him, him and Envy are really close. Of course. Yeah, and then, you know, I, I met 50. Uh, he was performing at, what's that, that, that strip club? In, in, it was, it was Su Super Bowl in Miami, 11-11. Oh. oh, 11. 11, yeah, 11. And he came up to me like, yo, I, know, I see what you're doing with you and Envy. Uh, Great I know place. what you guys are doing. I'm going to put you on TV. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah, you're here. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, he's the biggest, you know, when it comes to TV right now, you know. No, he's the guy. The shows, like, Come on. You know, he, he's the guy. There is nobody else. There's nobody so, else. you know, we're definitely in, in a good position right now. Um, before you go, let's break down. I want to break down a couple of things for anybody watching this. The things that they should have in place, whether it's a security blanket in the bank account, whether it's your credit score needs to be this, whether it's you need to make sure this is in place before you dip mm -hmm. your toe into this real estate shit. Credit is one of the most important things. You always want to make sure, right, you got good credit, right? You interview a couple of different lenders, make yeah. sure you're pre-approved, right? So you go out there and pull the trigger. Uh, learn as much as you can when it comes to the lending side of the business because a lot of times you might get pre pre be pre-approved by a lender that is not looking at everything. Mm -hmm. So make sure you speak to somebody and interview a couple of different people, right? Contractors, same thing. Always talk to a couple of different guys. Like never just go off of it where, oh, my cousin recommended to this guy. I grew up with this guy. You can't do that in real estate, right? But credit, right? Get pre-approved. Have a couple of dollars. Got to have about, uh, you, you would yeah. say about 680 to 720 to start? Yeah. Well, it depends, though, because FHA, you can go as low as a 580 credit score. Okay. But it, de it depends on the market, too, right? Because for us, we're in multifamily land, so FHA is great in the tri-state area. But let's say you're in Cali, you don't really have a lot of multifamilies. Of course. So that, that, that's the thing, right? Because when, uh, let's say if you want to buy a three-family, right, and you only make, let's say, 40000 a year, which is not a lot of money, mm -hmm. you could do it. Because with FHA, they're going to use the two other units to help you qualify for more for that property so now it looks on paper that you make more money by using the rents so they're going to use about 75 to 80 percent of each of those apartments so oh, if wow. it's a thousand dollars they're going to use 800 800 add that to your total income that you make a year and now you qualify for more but that's a good hack but you can only do that with a multifamily. Mm. It depend depending on what and you have to live rent. in one of the units yeah you're supposed to you're supposed to live in one yeah. of them and I'm then they use mortgage the guys so i could say you're supposed to right but you could always refinance, right? So a cool thing, just to give the people a little trick, with FHA, you could go up to a four-family, right? Okay. So the trick is... So you can have a, up to a fourplex. Yeah, so you want to start with a four-family because you can only go backwards. You can't go forward. So meaning you could go from a four-family, refinance, go to a three-family, refinance, go to a two-family, refinance, and go to a one-family. So each time you get rid of the FHA, but now you're only putting down 3.5%. So each time you get rid of the FHA, yep. when you refinance, you can do another FHA. Yep, you can do it again. And then once you're done, right, another hack, once you're done in that area, you can go to a different state and start over. So each state, there, it's like a blank slate on the yeah, FHA you're, side. Yeah, you're moving. You can always move. Wow. Nobody can tell you that you can't move. Wow. Okay. And the next thing you know, you know. Again, you but can start it. start with four because yeah. in order to use that hack, you can only go backwards. Yeah, but the problem is it's hard to find four families. They're almost like unicorns. Mm -hmm. So you you'll probably get luckier getting a three or a two. Gotcha. That's dope, man. Hey, we gotta stop the interview real quick to tell you about our partners at Odd Socks, our presenting sponsor here at the Bootleg Hit Podcast. Listen, Christmas time is approaching faster than you think. I mean, we're like fucking a month and a half away or some shit. Whatever. Uh, get some odd socks for your folks. Go to oddsocksofficial.com, use the promo code bootleg, and you'll save 20% off at checkout. The most comfortable socks in the world. That's right. We got some Scarface socks. They got WWE. You know what I mean? They also got the Cheech and Chongs. They also got the Flaming Hots for you hot shit eating fucks out there. My favorite, just the odd socks basics. They're just so comfy. Literally the most comfortable sock in the world. I'm holding the fucking sock right now. You can save 20% off. Plus, they got boxers now, baby. All right. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. Promo code bootleg at checkout. Save 20% off and support our family at Odd Socks and the podcast at the same fucking time. 
Let's get back to the interview. Um, yeah, we'll go follow this guy. It's flipping underscore NJ. Yeah, yeah so uh, flipping underscore NJ. Yeah. Uh, me and Envy also have a new platform now. Uh, it's called uh, Flip to Dow. What's that? Uh, so that's a real estate uh, membership platform where uh, we have all the education you can think about when it comes to real estate, right? You want to learn about hard money loans. You want to learn about developing, flipping, uh, Airbnb, rental properties. You click a button, the answer is there by somebody that is in that business, right? I don't do Airbnbs. I don't do wholesaling. But on this platform, you're going to find somebody that does it. Too much maintenance for you? Um, it's just that, you know, it's slower money, right? Mm. That, that, that's the whole thing. It, it's kind of slow for me compared to what I can make on, on the other side. Gotcha. Right? And then you have the real estate education. Then you have the real estate network, meaning you need a contractor in Chicago. You need an architect in Miami. You need a plumber in Ohio. You click a button, the answer is there. Oh, wow. And then the third part, which is the dopest part, is that we are going to fractionalize properties into shares. So for as little as $100, you can invest in a deal with me and Envy. Oh, wow. From a rental property to a flip property. So if somebody has a, a, some extra change and yeah. they don't want to do it, they could just buy yeah. a share of whatever you guys are doing. Yeah. And then people, the other cool thing is too, which we haven't really pushed, right, about the platform is that we're giving away a house. Oh, wow. Yeah. So people that uh, become members of the platform, they, they're going to have a chance to win a three family in Patterson, New Jersey. Wow. It's worth $500,000. Each apartment may, uh, brings in 2000 a month. So you can flip it for the five or you can rent each apartment. And of course, whoever wins, we're going to help you with the management. So is this an app, website? So it's a website. So it's www.flip, F-L-I-P, number two, DAO, D-A-O. Flip to DAO. And then out. how much is the monthly membership? So the monthly membership is, it varies, right? So if you want to do monthly, it's 100 300 and 360 Okay. If you want to pay it up front, it's $1,500, uh, 3000 and 5000 For the year? Yeah. Okay. No, but it's lifetime. Oh, for lifetime. Yeah. Even the, the monthlies, once you're done paying the monthlies, you know, to whatever the time frame is, you're done. And you guys are vetting, like, all the contractors to make sure everybody's yeah, on there is legit. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope because yeah. that's one of the hardest things, right? Like you said, it's finding a contractor you could trust, yeah. finding some people that are, like, good people to go through, whether yeah. it's lenders, whatever. So you guys kind of do all that for yeah. we pretty much do all of that. And it took us a while to come up with something, right? Because even at our seminars, we never really had the next step. Right. So now this is the next step, right? If you want to learn, you can learn. If you want the network, you got the network. But let's say at that point, I still don't feel comfortable doing my own deal. Now you can invest in a deal with us for as little as $100. And get a return. You know, if it's a rental property, it'll be monthly. If it's a flip property, it'll be quarterly. Wow. And now you could be a landlord with us. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. So if, like, someone's got 50 grand, they could throw up 50. Yeah. So, or is there a max? I actually, may I uh, ask you that? The max is 10000 Okay, so if someone's got ten grand. Yeah, as can... of right now, though, because eventually we are going to be doing bigger commercial deals, right. bigger deals, but it's anywhere between, you know, anywhere from a two-family all the way up to... So a 100 to 10 grand people can invest into a property with you off of this yeah. website. And, and let's say there's 100 properties, you can put $1,000 on each property. Oh, wow. Yeah, so the, there really is no, no max to it. Because when you think about it, right, when you think about any other educational platform, right, yeah, you get the education, but what's the next step? True. This actually has both steps right there. Yeah. So now you don't got to overthink it. You, there's no excuse for you to pull the trigger. And that's why we came up with this concept. Are you salivating for this market drop that's coming? Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a shark. Yeah. Of course. I want, I want the market to drop. But what people got to understand is it's not going to be like, oh, wait, you know, that market. Because no, but it'll be a correction, smarter. right? It'll, it'll be, be a correction. correction. Yeah. You're going to see more deals. I was uh, at the sheriff's sale the other day, and I was talking to some of the asset managers from some of the banks, and they told me they don't see foreclosures really hitting the market hard to like 2025. Wow. So you still have a while before you see all that inventory. That's what I've out. heard. I've heard like even just the correction on the, like the, the housing cost catching up to the rate is going to be at least a year from now. Yeah. Because this is the issue, right? It's supply and demand. Like anything in the, in the world is supply and demand, right? So... There is no supply uh, in the housing market right now. So now you have these people that got rates like you, you guys did, right? Two and a half to three and a half percent. Mm -hmm. You're not going to sell your house. Right. Why would I? Because it, you're going to, yeah. You're going to pay the same thing you pay. Except right? for you're going to have less of a house. You're going to have less of a house and now your rate is high. So now you have that, that influx of inventory that's not No available. one's selling those houses. Yeah. So now you have those people that aren't selling. Yeah. Right? Foreclosures are still frozen because of COVID, right? Yep. You still have the that forbearance thing. Yeah, forbearance or that. Who the hell knows when they're going to fix that? Right. Now your only other option is pay rent for a high-ass apartment. Which is what everyone's doing. And you're throwing money away. 
Mm. So people still have to buy houses. Yeah. So we have a big problem in this country where there's a housing shortage. Yeah. In apartments and houses. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Something's got to give. Yeah, something has to give. But even with the rates now, it still hasn't really affected how they thought it would affect the market. Whenever you look at any article now, right, you got to read between the lines. It'll tell you there's less sales, right? You'll see that in the article. There's a housing recession, less sales. But then when you read the same article, it tells you, but values aren't going down. Mm. Yeah, no, it, no, for sure. Yeah, no, I've noticed. I'm like, yo, like, I'm, I mean, obviously it's cooled out, like, but it's it's not, because, dude, six months ago, like, as you probably know, yeah, there was, everything was getting overbid like crazy. Oh, People were overpaying wild oh, amounts of money for these properties. But that's chilled out a bit, mm -hmm. at least from what I've seen. But like you said, like, the overall property value still isn't really, it hasn't hit, yet. It hasn't hit like that, yeah. man. Let's see what happens, right? Because it is an election year, so hopefully, they're gonna something's gonna come up, right? I was gonna say when, 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 like we always hear, like uh, I've always heard people say, "Yo, it doesn't matter who's the president, I'm gonna get my money." Yeah. Did you notice like a big difference from when a guy like Donald Trump, who's obviously a real estate guy, is in office and probably is writing codes to yeah. benefit his business, to a guy like Joe Biden or when Obama was in? I'm gonna be honest with you the best years in my business were the obama years right. right obama came in he fixed the housing market right he was great for real estate mm -hmm. trump came in lower rates great for real estate joe biden now is not really affecting me personally right because the thing with me is i'm also a landlord so since rents are so high i'm good i can yeah. wear the store right on the flip side i'm still doing flips i'm still getting my numbers but it might change but for a lot of other people he has affected their business right you know, just let's just talk about last year, right? From last year to now, uh, gas prices, right? It's insane. All these guys that I know were investing into trucks, right? They're making money in the truck business, making money on tour. Road. I know a lot all of people. All those guys are taking yeah. a loss now. Yeah. Because of gas prices, mm -hmm. right? Now you've got interest rates went up. Most companies now, most uh, lenders, they got rid of almost half of their workforce because there's no refis. Mm. So now. You know, all these industries. Yeah, no are one's, being no one's doing refinancing right now. Yeah, Why? So, it's it's crazy. So there's not that many people. That and they're not going to do. They're not going to refinance for the foreseeable future. Because it makes no sense unless unless you're a guy that has a hard money loan. If you got a two point seven percent interest rate, yeah, how, how many years are you gonna have to wait before it makes sense for you to refinance that? Yeah, that, that's what I tell people. It's like I I got people all the time. Hey, my value's up. I want to cash out refi. I tell them no. To do a cash out refi, keep your original rate and get a line of credit. Ah, so now when you need the money, you is a higher rate, but it's not and you the can whole get the, so you can also get the line of credit, right? And it, it just is sitting there. Yeah, so you need and it. and and it doesn't affect anything until you touch it, yeah. right? So you pull the trigger. So for people who don't know, like a line of credit is, let's say you bought a house two years ago, you got three hundred thousand yeah. dollars in equity in it. At any given time, you can get pull out that line of credit. That is not the same as refinancing. Yep. So let's say, for example, you bought a house for three hundred thousand, right? Now it's worth five hundred thousand. You have your first mortgage, right, of let's say a two and a half percent. You don't want to touch that. Now your house is valued five hundred thousand. So you could take out ninety percent of that value, minus whatever your loan balance is, right? Mm. So whatever that. Right? But that's for the local lender, right? You want to go to a credit union or a smaller bank in your area for the lines of credit because you get a uh, you get a. Uh, the LTB will be higher. If you go to, a, uh, let's say, a Chase or Bank of America, they'll probably do 80% loan to value. Right. One of those smaller places, they'll probably do 90%. And that's also another option for somebody who might want to flip a house or get a yep. rental property. Yeah. Or so you take out that cash of, and equity, you leave your, your original loan balance with the lower rate, you don't touch that. You have a new payment for the LOC. Yep. And then you can take that money and invest, yep. do whatever that's you it. want. Think about it, right? If you, equity is monopoly money, right? That's how you got to think about it. If the values go up or down, which is going to happen now with single of family course. homes, that money's not there no more. So you're better off. Let's say you take that money out, take out a hundred thousand, and now you make three thousand, four thousand from a rental property, and that's going to pay that mortgage for that line of credit and your cash flow. Would you suggest anybody who has equity like that get that process? Like somebody who's got an investor state of mind, somebody who's mm -hmm. always looking. Would you suggest that they have that ready at all times, just in case? Right now. Like, I would do it, like, right now. Like, I won't even wait. Because it doesn't affect you doesn't unless affect you spend you. the money, right? It doesn't affect you, yeah. It, you only pay interest once you start using the dollars. So That's it's it. just sitting there just in, sitting in case you want it. Yep. And it could, usually, I think, you could probably do about 10 years of just having the money. I'm just sitting there. And, and then after 10 years, it just yep. expires? Yep. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
So if you're sitting there and you got a house. Yep. Because you never know. A you business, know. You might come into a business where like yeah. someone's trying to sell their laundry mat or. Well, the next couple of years is going to be very interesting, right? So we get a new president. There's going to be a lot of opportunity. Right. Mm -hmm. So you rather be ready with a couple of dollars than not have any dollars. Yeah. Because like you said, man, with some of these situations, timing is everything. Yeah, that's it. And if you're on auction.com, you find a house. Yeah. You gotta pull and you're ready to go. Yeah. You're ready to it. go. Yeah. There it is. Would you, oh, last thing, would you suggest somebody doing that or a hard money loan? The LLC it, or the hard money loan? If it's the rehab, right? If, if it's a rehab property, I will always go with hard money. Okay. Just because it's easier to qualify. You can move quick. You could play with the numbers, meaning there's a lot of techniques you could use where you can actually get some money back at the end. Right. And kind of cover your down payment and stuff like that. Okay. When you go with traditional fa financing, it takes longer. Uh, but if it's a rental property that you just want to get a cash flow property and you need to move quickly because you already have your, your primary residence, you go with an asset-based loan. That's pretty That's quick. That's the line too. of credit, right? No, uh, asset-based loan is the stated program. Oh, the stated thing yeah, you were telling me about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, line of credit, HELOC, same thing. Got you. Yeah, if you got equity sitting there, you do a line of credit or a HELOC and you get that money in two to three weeks. Wow. There it is, man. Yep. Appreciate your time. Oh, Appreciate the game. Oh, thanks for having me, bro. Go to the website. Sign up for the uh, classes. Yep. Uh, www.flipptodow.com. Yep. Flippin underscore MJ. And then there's going to be more seminars coming across yep. the country. More seminars coming up. Yep. You guys got to get on that West Coast, man. No, definitely, man. <laughs> We're probably going to be out there, I think, uh, in April. There it is, man. Appreciate you pulling yeah, up. Definitely, man. Thanks for having me. Boom.